quiet. <laughs> Maybe that's why they have that elevator music. You reckon? It's, it's quiet. People get on it and don't want to talk. The title of today's message is There's a Hole in Your Pocket. <laughs> There's a Hole in Your Pocket. We're going to be in Haggai. I think this is probably the second time in my preaching career, short preaching career, that I've uh, preached out of Haggai. The last time I did is when we were uh, uh, get, getting ready to do a building fund for this church over in the arena. And uh, it, it had to do with building God's house. And that's what, uh, what the whole uh, book of Haggai, it's only two chapters long, is what it's about. About building God's house. A uh, little bit of a background. Uh, the, the Israelites had come out of captivity and they did that in three stages. They, they, they went into captivity in three stages and they came out of captivity in three stages. And it was about over a period of uh, 90 years, something like that. Or maybe it was only 30 years. Three decades. It was 30 years. But uh, So it, it took some time to get them all back there. But it was the remnant that went first. to And, and it was King Cyrus who ordered and wrote the decree that they would go back. And in that decree, he, he said that they would go, that when they went back, that they would pay for, in other words, the, out of the, I, I can't remember what the fund was called, but it was, uh, but it was a fund set aside just for them to pay for the reconstruction. So it kind of reminded me of, uh, of when uh, uh, God brought the Israelites out of Egypt. He brought the Israelites out of Egypt and then uh, made, the, the, made the Egyptians pay them as they left and, and took all the gold and silver and all kinds of things with them. I mean, they were rich when they left that place. Kind of like, remind me of that joke about the lady that was, uh, would go outside and pray because she was uh, uh, out of money. She needed food for her kids. She had a job, but it had not got paid yet. She'd just pray, God, just, I'm asking you to provide for my family. Here to, you know, and she'd go outside on the back porch and do that. Uh, every day. And there was an atheist that lived right next door to her and would hear her prayers all the time. And it irritated him. So he went and got a whole bunch of groceries and put it on her back steps. And when and she went out there to pray again, she said, Thank you, Lord, that you gave me all this food. You answered my prayers. And that atheist couldn't wait. He jumped out. He said, Lord didn't do that. I did that. I brought the I just wanted to show you. Your God don't even answer you anymore. She said, Thank you, Lord, for providing this food and making the devil pay for it. And that's kind of what, that's what it kind of reminded me of that joke right there. Is, is when, when they left Egypt, when they left Egypt, God made the devil pay for their, uh, I mean, gave them all that. And then right here, when they came out of captivity, there again, that the God made the devil pay for, for their uh, reconstructing the temple that they, they had destroyed. And not just that, all of the, all of the, uh, 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 the settings inside the temple that had been looted by, I think it was uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the, when they were uh, drawn into captivity, uh, I think it was the second plunder of them, because I, like I said, they did it in, in three stages. They, uh, they, he, he confiscated all of, the, all of the candles, I mean everything, all the settings inside the temple, the gold and, and things of that nature that was the... the, the utensils that they had inside that temple. They even uh, he released those to come back. But uh, what has happened is they're here and Haggai, he's an old, he's old at, the same, at this time, but he, he went back with them as God's prophet. And just a little bit more background, I'm just going to read what my Bible said. It has been several years since uh, Zerubbabel, go, the governor, which the, 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 he, they went back and they were appointed to uh, uh, Zerubbabel was appointed the governor, and Joshua the high priest led, the, led his first exiles to the Jerusalem to rebuild the temple of God. Haggai, uh, Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem, yeah, I already said that. Haggai, already an old man, came with them. Now, now this small group of uh, group with great aspirations has come upon hard times. They have allowed the negative influence of opposition and, and, and uh, scanty uh, resources to, dis, uh, to, discourage them, to discourage them to the point of quitting after having completed the, the temple's foundation. The Jews, neglect, the, the, uh, ne the Jews' neglect of the temple is made worse by their pro uh, uh, 
preoccupation with constructing elaborate homes for themselves. The Spirit of the Lord uh, comes upon the prophet Haggai and prompts him to, to stir the people uh, to, uh, to resume building the temple. They have returned from exile and the people of Israel ignored God's house. That's in a nutshell what's going on. They ignored God's house. And uh, they'd, only they'd only completed, as it said, the, the, the setup right there, I've told you, that the, they'd only completed the foundation. Now, if you read into Ezra, in fact, you can just drop this down, uh, Ezra chapter 4 and chapter 5 goes into detail about what is happening here and what was, what was going on back in uh, where they came from out of captivity in, in old Babylon, I think it's Persia at this point. Uh, Persian kingdom had taken over. But uh, in fact, I know it was because at this point it's Artaxerxes is the, uh, is the, uh, the king there, the, the ruler of, of Persia. And anyway, they came from there. And what's going on there, just to, I'm continuing with the setup, guys, because it's, uh, it's pretty in-depth. But uh, what was going on there is there was a faction there talking to Artaxerxes, telling him, you don't want them to rebuild that temple, man. They, they're just a bunch of rebels. We always have problems with them when they do that. They get some power. They, they start growing in power, and then they're going to be a problem for us. And he said, you know what? I'm agreeing with that. So he, he, uh, he wrote a, a decree and, and, went and, and sent uh, uh, people there to uh, forcibly stop them from building the temple. And... What we're, what's happening right here now, guys, they'd already stopped building the temple. They went to the, as far as having the, uh, the foundation built. But they were discouraged, as I read earlier, they were discouraged. And, uh, and it was just the, the main, I don't know, just all of the above made them stop building the temple. Now keep in mind, God Almighty is the one that set it in place everything to, to happen for them to go back and build His house. That's what the decree said for them to go back and rebuild the temple. Amen? Amen? So it doesn't matter what's going on here, guys. They should be obeying God. Not worry about all this other stuff that's going on. But they didn't. They stopped. And they were starting to run out of stuff. They didn't have enough. They didn't have enough stuff. So they were discouraged and they stopped building. And, and, uh, and God was angry and he gave them a message through his, his prophet Haggai. Haggai, however you say it. Haggai, I think it is. Anyway, we can learn some lessons here, guys, from, uh, from, these, from this, these, this passage here today. Uh, and it's going, we're going to be in uh, chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 9. I know that's a lot of scripture, and that's, that's not that much uh, being reading the whole daggone book, but it's just a real short book. But uh, there's three things, three, it's a three-point ser sermon, and, I want to, and the first point I want to make something that we can learn is that uh, uh, why there is never enough. There's a, the same to, y'all ever been to that point? They ain't just, it just ain't enough. No matter what I try, I, I just can't have enough. There's just not enough to, to make ends meet. Well, that's what's happening right here. Let's just begin reading verse 1. In the second year, in the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the, the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, uh, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. It would be easier if they would just, tell, just say uh, 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 Zerubbabel and, and uh, Joshua for me. And just quit. Anyway, I'm, I'm here to there. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not, has not yet come for the Lord's house to be, to be built. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it, is it, a, is it a time for you, you yourselves to, uh, to be living in your paneled houses, I mean immaculate homes that they're building for themselves, while this house, my house in other words, remains a ruin? Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have, have enough. You drink, but never have your, have your fill. You put on clothes, but you're not warm. 
You're, you earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Hence the, the message title. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and, and build the house. My house, in other words, he's saying. Build the temple. So that, my, so that I may, may, uh, may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expect much, but see, it, 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 it turned out to be little. What you, what you brought home, I blew away. Why, declares the Lord? Because of my house, which remains in ruin, while each of you, each of you is busy on his own house. Therefore, because of you, because of you uh, the heavens have, have withered with dew. I mean, sorry, withhold, withheld. Let me read that again. Therefore, because of you, the heavens uh, have withheld their, their dew, and the earth is its crops. I called for a drought on the, on the fields and on the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, and whatever the ground produces on men and cattle and on the labor of your hands. God rebuked Israel for freely uh, uh, rebuked Israel for, uh, for freely spending money on themselves but withholding offerings to him. That's what's going on. I want to I'm going to point out a few things here before I move on to the next point. God held back his blessings from, the, from, uh, from them just as, as they had held back the offerings and, and things that they were expected to build his house. They held back from him, so he held back from them. Uh, look at what's going on here in, in, in verse 5 and, and carrying on. It says, he said, uh, now this is what the Lord Almighty said. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have, har but have harvested little. This is what he's talking about, that he withheld from them. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to be only to put them in, in a purse that has holes in it. Why is there never enough? The reason there's never enough is because we're not given enough to the Lord. Amen. Not very amen, few amens right there. I didn't hear, but uh, but that's that's what's going on here. That's exactly what's going on here. But uh, we're not going to truly be happy, guys. I mean, look at what's happening. Everything had holes in. It. You, you know what I'm talking about? It's that uh, you, you struggle, you strive to to move forward, but you can't seem to get there. You know what I'm saying? And, and it seems like everything's against you. Well, pretty much everything is against you. And it could be because we're being selfish with what we have rather than honoring God. Amen. There again, I guess it's one of them messages. I'm not going to get very many amens out of it. <laughs> All right, again. Next point I want to make is in verse 12. To look at the quick obedience. Verse 12. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. See, that's what I mean. I wanted to shorten it. Shorten it so I don't have to repeat this whole thing. And the whole remnant of the people of, of the people obeyed the voice of God, their God, uh, the voice of the Lord their God, and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared the Lord. When the people heard this and heard about the and guys, because I mean, if somebody would just tell us sometimes where we're messing up, we might look at it and say, you know what, I can see that, and quickly we would obey to get out of the situation we're in. And very quickly they obeyed because they were under drought. I mean, they were uh, God had held back the rains and things of that nature, and it was almost under a curse, almost under a curse. But uh, but they quickly quickly obeyed.
And we can head off a lot of stuff, guys, if we'll just quickly obey ourselves. As soon as God reveals what we're doing wrong through His Word or, or just through the, the Holy Spirit speaking to us, or the third voice that I spoke of before, uh, just some, a word from our friends, wise counsel, if we would just respond to those things, we can get back right with God. And, and I want you to look in here, the, the final thing that I'm is, is verses 13 through 2-9. Uh, and that is God's immediate response. If we will just take the time, if we will just quickly obey, then He's going to have just as quickly a response to us for that quick obedience. And it says this, verse 13, Then Haggai, the, uh, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the, of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the, the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of, of Judah, and the, and, the spirit of jo and the spirit of Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They, can, uh, they came to, and this is because, it, this is God moving. There's a, there's a revival going on here. That's what's describing right here. There is a revival because a revival always breaks out when there's true repentance. Amen? Amen. I got an amen out of that one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they came to be they came and began to work to work on the on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. On the twenty fourth day of the sixth month, in the second year of, of King Darius. On the 21st day of the, of the seventh month, uh, the, the word of the Lord uh, came through the, the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. See what I mean? Why don't you shorten it for me? That's <laughs> gone. <laughs> and, the, and the remnant of the, of the people. Ask them, who of you is left who saw the house in his former glory? How does it look uh, uh, to you now? Does it not seem to, to you like nothing? But now, the, but now I'm going to make sure I said that. But, uh, does, it, does, it, does it not seem to you like nothing? But now the strong, uh, the strong of Zerubbabel declares the Lord, uh, the, the strong, uh, be strong, O, o, Josh, o, jo o Joshua, I need to read, read, read that. But, but now, be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, and the high priest. Uh, be strong, all of you people uh, of the land, declares the Lord, uh, the Lord. And work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what, the, what I, what I co uh, covenanted with you when, I, when, when you came out of Egypt. And my spirit remains among you. Do not fear this is, this is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will, I will once more shake the, the heavens and the earth, the, the sea and the, and the dry land. I will shake all the nations and, and, the, and, the, and the desires and the, and the desired of, of all nations will come. And I will fill this house with, with, my, with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The, sil uh, the, uh, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this, pre of this present house will be greater than the glory of, glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. God reassured Israel with the promise that he had made. Guys, we have promises in, God, in God's Word for us. In fact, there's probably a promise in God's Word for every situation that we find ourselves in. But to access those promises is not something we don't just, uh, it's not something we, like we just, uh, oh, if we pray real hard, we're going to get it. No, it takes an act of obedience through us. We have to admit that we're wrong. We have to quickly obey God. Amen? And He will quickly respond to us. And we, He will fulfill the promise that He's made us. To heal us. Amen? Whatever that situation might be, there's a promise for it. Amen? Amen. <sighs> but he, he assured Israel of his promise and his, and his presence. That's so important. The, guys, when, when uh, the Bible says in Ezra, 
when when uh, uh, the second uh, the second wave of attack from from uh, uh, oh what's that dude's name I said first uh, Zerubbabel. No, no, no. Yeah. It's it's the first king. Uh, oh, Nebuchadnezzar. I, I can hear what y'all saying. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. Lila. <laughs> I, if I just stuck my tongue, maybe somebody could have read it, right? But <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, when he uh, when he went on his second rampage to uh, uh, to to root them, and when he when he robbed the temple and he looted the temple and he tore the temple down and he took all of those things out of it, the Bible says that the Lord's presence left the left the temple. His, his presence left the temple. And I'm reminded when I read that part that uh, that he would feel and his glory would be greater now than it was before. I'm reminded of the time when when God instructed uh, to uh, the the temple to be built and Solomon built that temple. And there was a big to do about when the Lord came down, His Spirit came to indwell and fill that place. Amen? And they're saying that that's going to happen again. Guys, we can mess up. And it'll feel like God's not there anymore because of where we're at. God is the unmovable force in the universe. He, has, he does not move. But sometimes we stray away from Him and it feels like He's left. But we can be reunited with him. But it, 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 it's it's uh, it's through our it's through our repentance. So what's going on here? What made it so that these guys were that God uh, uh, was indignant with them that he was his anger was against them? What was it? They were sent there to finish his house, to build his house first, build it up first, and all of this stuff started coming against them. And they gave in to the pressure. So they stopped building. And that looks to me like there's a stuff because they, they had the money to build the temple. To me, now it doesn't say that, but to me it looks like that they started using that stuff to build the houses. All of the stuff that they had from God, they started using for themselves. Amen? Amen. And then what did God tell them? He said, you go up there and you cut down a bunch of trees and timbers and bring them down and finish my house. Amen. I've got a, something I want to do here, and I would love to, to be able to take credit for this, but I cannot. I cannot. And the reason I cannot is because it was uh, Tony Evans that came up with this. And I'm, just, I'm stealing this from him. Amen. 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 Uh, YouTube, Mr. Evans, I'm sorry, but, but uh, it works. This works right here. I got some apples here, and I'm going to put nine apples, these red apples, nine apples. And let me say this while I'm sitting this up, guys. Do you think that God needs your money? No. no, He does not. He desires it because it puts us in the right place with Him. Amen? But... We have other commodities other than just money. Amen? Amen? We have time. Time is a commodity. It takes 24 hours for this massive ball called Earth to uh, make a revolution around the sun. Being one day. You don't? I said something wrong. Okay, I'm sorry, the, the, the earth's spinning on its axis. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> sorry, I got that wrong. All right. Y'all know what I'm saying. Amen. Whether I'm wrong or right, you know what I'm saying. 24 hour day. All of us have that same time. Now, who gave it to us? God did. It's His time, it's His planet that He made that's turning on its axis. And here's the sun over here, and we have that same 24 hours. All, right. All of us have the same amount of time. And that time belongs to God. But He gives it to us. Amen? Ain't you glad He gives it to us? So it's not just monetary gain 
in money, but it's all of our time as well. Now that's nine apples, and that represents our money, our time, and well, including this one apple, this one apple, this green apple. It includes this one as well. But God said, I want this one. You can have them. I, you can have all of those nine right there. I want this one. Amen? See, if we're being right and being good stewards with this, this is going to be easy to give because everything's going to be right in our lives. You see what I'm saying? Being right in our time. Being right in our time. But if we're not good stewards with this, and we do something like, you know what, without asking God, because I'm going to reiterate, that's God's. It belongs to Him. If you think you own something, you're bought and paid for by the, by the blood of Christ. You're a bond servant for Him. I'm a slave for, for God. He owns me. I don't own anything. So I need to ask him before I make any expenses, before I spend any of, my, of the money that he's given me right here to you or any of my time right here. I need to, to ask him, God, is this the, the best way for me to spend my time? Is this what I need to do? I see that I think I have a need right here. Is it all right with you? Do I have your blessings in order to make this new purchase? Amen? See what I'm saying? We need to ask him, because if we do that, then that's all we need is that right there. That's all we need is that. That's all we need to make it. But what happens right here? And there, here's something. There's something that always happens. I've seen it over and over and over. You're in the point right here when you're, I don't know, you might make $30,000 a year. It, it may be less than that now. But you have no, hard, you have no problem tithing unto the Lord. And giving him our time. But then we get to what we're making off. I mean, we get a big old raise. And the first thing we'll do is, you know, it is not right for us to be in this old riggedy house that we was in before. I'm going to buy a new house. And we're going to get, get in that new house. And we're going to start pushing this to the limit. Because we didn't ask God first. Amen? So we got to dip into his. So there's a one bite right there out of that, out of his, at, taking it out of his. You know, we, we're taking it over here. We're putting it with our stuff now. Because we built, we bought the bigger house. We didn't ask him if we could. We got to where we're making more. Amen. And we got to have a good car, right? It's only right that, that we drive around. And, I mean, we're children of God. We need to be. In a nice vehicle, right? There again, you had one that was got you from point A to point B. The air conditioner worked, the heater worked, and you was fine with it. It might have been all dented up and needed a paint job or something, but it was good. And it fit within the budget of the nine. Amen? Amen. But we don't. We, get, we go ahead and move on with it. We get a new car. There's another bite. Another bite out of it. Amen? What else can I talk about that we that we want to purpose? Oh God, you know, I got to have a vacation. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm wore out from working all the time in this new job I've got to making all this money to pay for this stuff. I need a vacation. So you got that. Every year you go on a vacation, stuff like that. And then the normal stuff starts hitting. Doctor bills that you didn't see coming that God did if you'd just listen to Him. Doctor bills and kids needing stuff in school and that you don't know about that you, you didn't plan for. Just stuff you didn't plan for. And before you know it, we're down to this. And then see, we have the audacity to come up to God's house and throw Him a core at the feet of the cross. Say, God, I want Your blessing. You see what I'm saying? That's where they were. They were at the point where they were, uh, uh, they thought everything was good. And then they, and they finally came to their senses. Guys, I'm saying this. Y'all know me, I'm not one to spend a whole lot of time on money, but when I do, I do. 
and when I, uh, or not just that, but on our time. Why is it that, uh, and here's the deal, guys. Here's the big deal right here. If we would take this, put it at the cross when we're supposed to on the first day of the week, as the Bible says, bring your tithe to the storehouse. Your time. What's the first day of the week? It's the first day of the week. That's where our time is. That's where that commodity of our time comes in that we spend. Y'all are doing the right thing. You're here on Sunday. Amen? Amen. Amen. Trying to get the stuff off of my knife before I put it up. Walk around with a sticky stuff. Thought about taking bites out of it, but with my false teeth, it'd probably pop out or something. I'd be all embarrassed. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but we often live that same way, don't we? We do. And then we wonder why the things that are happening to us, you know, it feels like our, 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 our money is just like our pockets have holes in them. Because, and that's the reason why is because we're subject to that devourer. He's there to take it, and he's going to take it with impunity until we get back to the point where we're repentive and we, we we serve God the way we should. Amen. Amen. That means giving Him all first. And it's not something that we can just say, yeah, I, okay, I'll just do it. No, God expects it. It's not something that we get to say, well, we do it or don't do it. He expects it. And when we don't do it, then we're subject to that devourer. Amen. Amen. I'm going to wrap this thing up right there. We fall back on that old excuse of not enough. Amen, we do. Lord, I can't afford to tithe. I was reminded of a, another instance where this, uh, this man was before his pastor, and he said, uh, Lord, uh, I mean, uh, he said, Pastor, he said, I, I, uh, you know, I, before I got all this, made all this money, got this house and everything, it used to be that I did, man, I could just tithe real easy, and, it, and, and everything was right with God, and I was happy. He said, but I just can't, I can't afford to tithe like I used to. He said, would you pray for me? So that preacher prayed, he started praying, he said, Lord, would you return this man's salary to the place where it was that he could happily tithe? <laughs> he said, whoa, I don't want that, man. Don't do that. <laughs> but uh, as we increase, we need to increase for God. And that's another thing that happens. Yeah, yeah come on, Brian. That's another thing that happens, you know. As we increase, we leave the we leave what we what we give him down. And another course that I left off, I should just cut out right right off the bat. The first thing is net or gross. Amen. I think some of us just knock out a chunk just right there. But anyway, God may be holding back because we're being stingy. In order to, we might return to Him. In other words, what I'm saying is God may be holding back in your life so that you will realize what's going on so that you can come back to Him. That's what He's after. He's not after your money. You don't need your money. He is the God of the cattle on a thousand hills. He created this entire universe. Do we think He needs our stuff? No, He don't need it. But he wants a, 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 a relationship with us. And that comes through acts of obedience. Always. Always. Amen. Amen. I don't know where you're at in your life. I prayed earlier as well on my knee there before, before the Lord. And I asked God. And in fact, Brian prayed on, uh, for you a couple times already. For those that uh, might come into this church here today with an emptiness in their heart, they don't know what's missing, they just know something is missing in their life. The only thing that's going to fit their guys is, is God's Holy Spirit. And we receive that through His Son. The Bible says in John 14 that uh, Christ said that I am, the, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. It's a free gift. All you have to do is receive. And uh, guys, maybe you've got something weighing heavy on your heart. You need to bring it up here to the altar and just drop it off. Don't 
leave here the same way you came in. This is a hospital. We're here to pray for each other. We're, we're here to, to patch one another up and get us back out in the Bible. Amen. It's good soldiers. But if you want to ask Christ into your heart, you can do it right where you're sitting. You don't have to come up or anything like that. If you'd like to ask Christ in your heart, this this, uh, this say a simple prayer like this and just mean it from your heart, guys. Just admit to Him first, Lord, I am a sinner. And right now, Lord, I turn from that sin. I'm agreeing, Lord, that you're right and I'm wrong. And I want to do things your way. So, Lord, I turn from that, uh, that sin. I I'm asking, Father God, that you, Lord Jesus, you would come into my life. I receive you by faith into my spirit. I believe you died on that cross for my sins. That you rose back to life. And you're living in me. From this moment forward, I will serve only you in Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen. You said that prayer for the first time, guys. And, uh, most important decision you ever make in your life, and I need to talk to you about it, so if you want to stick around after service, you come up and come see me. We're going to get ready and pass out to communion, because here at Rapture Jack Apple Church,